Psalms 140 A. Praise ye the Lord. As we're finishing Psalms. And we're going to see something interesting in this chapter. And it calls to wonder. But God, everything is in control. Even when you think your life is out of control, it's in control of God. You may not understand. What if, if it was all evolution? What if God wasn't the creator? What if it was evolution, the talk of man and science? Could you imagine what it would be like? The Bible records, praise ye the Lord, not nothing, big bangs, or men. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens. That's plural. There are three heavens. From the ground to where the eagles or, or clouds. As high as man can go in the airplane. So everything in that first heaven, praise ye the Lord. Crocodile. Ants. Lights. Man. Second heaven. From as far as the eagle can fly to that solid ice foundation that no one can break through that is before God's throne. The Bible speaks about principalities, Satan, the dragon, are there. That is not man's territory. The devils and Satan and the principalities praise ye the Lord. You think those satellites that are out there by man, you think they praise the Lord? And then you got the third heaven, God's holy heaven, capital H. Angels, seraphims, the saints, praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the heights. Mountains, I guess. You're up on the roof, praise ye the Lord. All the times you read about in the Bible, they were up on the roof. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye him, God, all his angels. So the angels are to praise the Lord. As I read to you last night, Revelation chapter 14, we were created to worship and praise the Lord. If you don't praise the Lord, you are violating what you were created for. You weren't created for money. You weren't created for sex. You weren't created for fame. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. The host of angels. So do you think when we get to heaven, you think we're going to admire grandma and her coon dog? You think we're going to admire Paul the apostle? You think we're going to admire William Booth? You think we're going to admire Schofield? You think we're going to admire any of the, 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 the preachers that brought the revival in America? No. Now, they may have been great men. They may have been men that God used, but we're not going to lift up man. We're going to lift up Jesus Christ, unison, unity. Imagine everybody for once without sin in a unified voice praising God and singing praises to God. We don't even sing the same hymns in all the churches at the same time on Sunday mornings as we're meeting. Listen, when we meet Sunday morning, 
in Daytona Beach, Florida. England has already had church services and they're probably over with. Iraq services to God are completely over with and done. When we meet to worship God and we start singing praises of God, people in Texas are still in bed. Just getting up. People in Washington State are long in the middle of the morning still sleeping and have not gone to church yet. And yet one day when the Lord comes for this church, we're all going to be unified together. We're going to meet in the clouds and not one lost person will be there. Everyone who has ever trusted Christ as their Savior will be together and will worship the Lord Jesus Christ from then on. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. How's the sun and moon and the stars give God praise? One time God told the sun, he says, don't you move. For Joshua. Son said, Err. Every morning, son, I want you to raise. And I want you to go down. Don't you stop anywhere. Okay. One day, son, I want you to go. I'm talking about the solar system, son. I'm talking S U N. One day, I'm not going to have you burn. I'm going to have you go out. Okay. And the Bible speaks out of the millennium. He's going to relight it. Or whatever he's going to do. The moon. How does the moon praise the Lord? It's all obedience to the Creator, unlike man. You don't look up in the sky and you know, look, look at the newspaper. Hey, look at that. It's supposed to be waxing. And you go out there. And there it is. And you tell your sweetheart, honey, it's a it's a full moon tonight. Let's go watch it. And you go outside, the moon's gone. Don't you say it was a full moon tonight? There's not, I don't see a cloud in the sky. That's what the newspaper said. And you get reports for the next day. The moon goes to visit the moons of Jupiter. They don't do that. It stays in the Earth's orbit. Yet man, he'll go venture where he doesn't belong. And all the moons, in all our solar system, and all the universe. Praise him, verse 4, ye heavens of heavens. And ye waters that be above the heavens. Uh-oh. There's a study right there, Genesis chapter 1. There's waters above your head. I guess that's why they send spaceships and nautical men with, with uh, pilots. Using a compass. But they don't know what they're doing. Space is water. But we're not talking about that. We're not talking about science. We're not talking about position. We're talking about the creation giving God praise. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Jehovah. Jesus. For he commanded, and they were created. Genesis 1. Let there be light. Boom. There it was. You know, when God said, Let there be a great light and a lesser light. And God's sitting around. One of these moments is going to come. Hold on, angels. Relax. Okay, there it is. <laughs> no. There was a sun and a moon when, when, when God said, let there be. Man, I want you to go do this. And then God's got to wait. You know, the only thing that God created that does not obey God is the one that God for so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. The, the fact is that Jesus Christ died for all, but few will go in. Isn't that interesting? He 
he has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not pass. Even the heavens when it's rolled up and, and, and counseled by fire that Peter said, it's still going to be there. It's going to be renewed, renamed. The angels will still be there. Minus a third of them. He has made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all days. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Uh-oh. Well, let's talk about fire for me. Fulfilling his word. All right, we're John here in the spot. We're here over here in California. We got wildfires burning again, heading towards all these houses. Oh my God, it is just so bad. But those redwood trees, I believe it is, the trees over there, their seed will not germinate unless the outer casing is burned with fire. Then that seed that will hit the ground will germinate and produce a tree. They don't tell you that, do they? God has designed, and scientists know, and idiots still build their house there, that there will be fires by nature of God to produce. Let's hug a tree. Johnny on the spot is not telling you the whole truth. You shouldn't have built your house there. Let's turn to some real news, all right? Let's go live in, in, in the United Nations and see how much they're working behind the scenes to go against Israel. Let's tell them, no, you ain't going to have that. Hail. Hail is a reason. What? I don't know. But I know in Pharaoh's day that there was hail used by God for judgment. Some people, maybe you got to get hit on the head with hail. The, the, Get some sense now. I don't know. Snow. I hate that one. I hate snow. When I have to drive in it. Snow is a reason. Do you know that snow, the Bible records, has treasures of nitrogen for fertilization of crops? Snow has a fertilizer in it. Did you know that snow purifies the air and cleans the air? And gets out toxins, toxins and some kinds of, of uh, uh, flus and stuff like that. And vapors. Stormy wind. Hurricane. You know what I've always said about wind? And it's not a stormy wind. I, you ever watch wind? Wind blows things away. I, I believe wind is God's rake. Of the earth. Because wind will blow garbage and leaves all away. So why don't you rake your yard? I'll let God do it with his wind. And he will. All the leaves that fall in your yard, if without wind, you, you wouldn't be able to open your door. God blows those leaves and that stuff somewhere. And I don't care where, as long as it's off my property. I don't ever go out there with one of those weed whackers or a rake. I don't ever use any of those things. But the leaves are gone. So the wind blows away the excesses and dead things that, that are, are fall to the ground. Mountains. You know what's... Un, you know what's it is really unusual for Ezekiel. Now, as far as I know, there maybe it could be other. Ezekiel is the only man that God ever said to go preach to that mountain. Now, can you imagine Ezekiel going up to that mountain and saying, Hi, Mr. Mountain, I got a message for you. And then he would preach. And all hell. 
fruitful trees and all cedars. Have you ever studied trees in the Bible? You know there are places in the Bible that says trees will clap their hands? Now, I, I'm one of those people that I, I think that's going to be literal. Those limbs will be just... No, that could be wrong. But how are trees and cedars ever going to praise the Lord? By giving fruit. Can you just picture the day when we're in the millennium? A little Jewish boy, he's out there, he grabs a fig, the first fig. And like Jesus went to the free tree and there was none. You know that little boy just loves the Lord. He takes that little fig from the tree and just walks up to Jerusalem, walks up to the throne and says, here. I mean, they did say he was a teacher, right? And you do bring your teacher an apple. He may, not, he may have a fake tree. Or a great. You just picture that little boy just going up and saying, here, Lord Jesus. Here's something for you. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not. You want to talk about breaking God's heart. When that tree produces a fruit for all and for Jesus to... Listen, Jesus went to that fig tree and there was no fruit. He wanted a fig. He was God. He could have looked around and said, We're going. That could be a fig. He could have done that. But instead he cursed the tree. You know, record and write down in your Bible all the times that Jesus asked for something to drink and then record how many times he got an answer. He said, I thirst on the, on the cross and they gave him vinegar. Isn't that great? Can you imagine you're out there, you're working, it's hot in the garden and your wife comes out with a glass and it's got ice in it and, and oh, wow, thank you, dear. You take a little yeah. vinegar. Oh, wow. Mm. Cedars, they smell good. They smell good when you cut them open or when you burn them. You know the inside of the tabernacle, the temple, was made of cedars? And then they overlaid it with gold. Beast. Animals. Are going to praise the Lord and all cattle creepy things and flying fall kings of the earth now in the millennium that's going to be us we're made into kings revelation 1 all people Princes and all judges of the earth. Now that psalm is for today. Now I don't see anything where it's not. You know, every judge that sits on, on and calls himself a judge is to praise the Lord. Imagine if he don't. Imagine every ruler is told to praise the Lord. You send that verse 11 to the White House, say, kings of the earth, and you're the praise of, oh, I'm not a king, I'm a president. Yeah, yeah, you always look for a loophole, don't you? Both young men and maidens, old men and children. So it's, it's not leaving anybody else. Let them praise the name of the preacher. And that's not it. Let, us, let them praise the name of the Lord. If you're a Roman Catholic, you're not going to like heaven. We don't praise Mary and Popes. <laughs> they do think they don't get Mary and Popes. You don't marry Pope's and Mary. We don't honor them names. We don't honor Peter. We honor Jehovah and the Lord Jesus Christ. For 
his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people. Strength. His people in the Old Testament are Jews. The praise of all his saints. Again, people who are alive. Go stand in the graveyard for 24 hours and listen to all the Christians praising God. It's not going to happen. Now go into a church which is a Bible-believing church. People are saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And wait for them to sing. They're going to sing praises of God. The cemetery won't. You can have a Bible-believing church with a Bible-believing cemetery right outside the church windows. And you sit in that window and you wait to see who's going to sing praises to God. That will tell you who a saint is. Even of the children of Israel. Of people near unto him. And we close with praise ye the Lord. Ye. I'm reading it. I'm reading it to Gentiles. Ye. What are you to do? You are to praise the Lord. How do you praise the Lord? You do what God has designed for you. The first thing is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. Well, I don't know what the will of God is for my life. That's the first will. Number two, get baptized for a public testimony. Number three, four, five, six, seven, together, find a Bible-believing church. Get in your Bible and read it. Pray. Rejoice evermore and go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. How's that? Isn't that enough to start with? And then God will show you your own individual path to walk. But you are not going to go nowhere. I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. All right. Were you baptized? Well, no. I'm. A, then you ain't going nowhere. Because God told you to get baptized afterwards as a public testimony. Another thing that the Lord tells you to do is observe the Lord's Supper. Those are only two ordinances of the, of the church today. And I have been in a church where they never even thought about having the Lord's Supper. Why? I don't know. Oh, that's right. They feed the poor. And that Lord's Supper is to remind us of what Christ has done for us and that he's coming again. That's praising the Lord when you obey what God told you to do. That's praising the Lord. When you're out about somewhere and God says, give them a gospel track. And you obey. That's obeying and praising the Lord. When God will have you to do something for somebody, you know it's God. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know Holy Spirit want, is, is whatever, however he's talking to you. There's no doubt about it. It is the Holy Spirit and God working in your life to do something for somebody, and you don't. That's not praising the Lord. Praising the Lord is when your children are grown and, and you, you walk by the room and, and they're kneeling down and praying to God. That's praising the Lord. Or you, you walk in maybe another different family and you walk by the room you hear them playing instruments or singing to God. That's praising the Lord. Or you walk by the room and they're shooting dope or listening to music they shouldn't. That's not praising the Lord. It is time for church service, and you're out in a boat. That's not praising the Lord.
where if someone were to examine your checking account and find that you give to the to the Lord that's praising the Lord and they find that not only do you give to the Lord but it is a steady amount you give to the Lord and then more that's praising the Lord it's not like oh here's five dollars okay I'm done see you in about two years it's week or week after week or by week by week or month after month or whatever you have a steady amount that you give to the Lord that praises the Lord and you do it cheerfully that praises the Lord praying for others praises the Lord because you're thinking about others and you you are calling to God as a witness that he can do something for them and you believe he can do something that's a quadruple praise to the Lord Reading his word from Genesis to Revelation is a praise to the Lord. He wrote it for you to read. He didn't write it for it to be a dust collector. We're closing in on Psalms and it's closing up with praise ye the Lord. If you didn't do anything to praise the Lord today, you have failed. Don't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. Start now. Praise ye the Lord. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus says. Tell the